I chose not to do 5.3 uh, in general. Uh, we're not going to cover it because uh, it, it really rehashes some old stuff that we've done several times before, at least the last two years in my class, and um, and that can be restated pretty quickly. And there's some calculus in there that winds up being something we, we don't really use. And uh, if we ever do, it's really not that hard to uh, just tell you at that point. So just skipping over that and just really quickly summing up 5.3 in a, a quick statement. Um, uh, we're talking about inverse functions. If f of x is uh, not equal to, if f of x and g of x, there's these two functions, if they're inverses, uh, uh, so f of x and g of x are inverses, that means something really specific. So if I take g of x, you know, I take I take this function. I put some number in for x, and I get the y value of that. Uh, and I take that and I put it into that. Take that y value. Put that into f. Okay, so the y value from g goes into f. F will do the exact opposite things that g does, and give us back x. Okay, you probably remember that from previous years. Uh, and likewise, if I take f of, of some number x, I take that y value, I put it into g, g will do exactly the opposite things that f does and give us back x. So real quickly, an uh, example of two functions that are inverses are f of x equals 3x and g of x equals uh, 1 third x. You can see they do the exact opposite thing. If I take uh, f of g of x, you can see that, f of g of x would be f of g. Right, I take 1 third uh, uh, times x, put it into the function that multiplies x by 3, everything gets canceled out, I'm left with x. If I take g of f of x, then that is going to be 1 third times, x is now going to be f of x, and we get again x. So those two functions are inverses. Uh, because I can put one inside the other and get x back out. So, uh, using that, let's talk about the function, the natural log of x. f of x equals the natural log of x. Uh, what's the inverse of this function? Well, first, let's remember quickly that the natural log of e is 1. There was a special letter, or sorry, so special number e, such that if you took the natural log of e, you'd get 1. We talked about that in the last section. Um, so now I'm going to take, uh, remember what we're looking for here. We're looking for a function that I can put into the natural log and get x. So let's say I took the natural log of e raised to the x power. Well, I can use the properties of logs and bring this exponent down in front of the natural log. So I get x times the natural log of e. And the natural log of e is 1. So 1 times x is x. So you see, if I put e to the x right here, they kind of bring down the x as the exponent, the natural log of e will be 1, and I will get x as the final result. So the natural log of x and e to the x appear to be inverse functions, but if I want to show that they're inverse functions, I also have to show that e to the natural log of x uh, is equal to x. So what needs to happen here is I take e to the natural log of x and get x. Okay. So I'm just going to prove that to you real quickly. Um, first, let's say that I take e to the natural log of x, and I don't know what the answer is going to be. I'll call it something. I'll call it y. Okay. Then I'll do something uh, seemingly out of left field, but I'll just take the natural log of e to the natural log of x. Right? I'll just take the natural log of both sides. Okay. Now the, the properties of logs allow me to take the exponent and bring it down here. So I have the natural log of x times the natural log of e. And still over here I have the natural log of y. Natural log of e is 1, so the natural log of x equals the natural log of y, so x is equal to y. So this thing right here that I didn't know 
what the answer was. I took e to the natural log of x and I said, I didn't know what it was. I'll just call it y. Turns out it's x. Okay, so uh, those two things together give us a, a important little, uh, you know, two facts that the natural log of e to the x is x and e to the natural log of x is x. They, they undo each other. They are inverse functions. Um, so if I wanted to, for instance, solve an equation like uh, e to the x equals uh, 5 and find out what x is, I can use these inverse relationships and say, well, I'll take the natural log of both sides. Uh, and now I know that na the natural log of e to the something is just that exponent, so x is equal to the natural log of 5. If it was slightly more complicated and I had um, the natural log of x plus 5 equals 3, and I want to solve for x here, I'll use the other inverse relationship. I'll make each of these the power of e, so I, I exponentiate each side. So e to the natural log of x plus 5 equals e to the third power. Right? Of course, if these are equal, then if I make them both the power of e, they would have to be also you know, both sides equal. Uh, well, this relationship says e to the natural log of something equals that something, so that something is x plus 5, and that'll be equal to e to the third, and so x will be equal to e to the third minus 5. So you can see one application of this is that we can just solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Um, and use those to to cancel out e's and cancel out natural logs, just like we would if uh, if we had an equation like 3x equals 5, we'd divide by 3 on both sides and get x by itself. Um, so that is the, the first thing about e to the x is that it's the inverse of natural log of x. Okay, so uh, let's take all that information, we'll sum it up here. Uh, e to the x, let's say, uh, move that over a little bit. Uh, f of x equals e to the x and g of x equals the natural log of x are inverse functions. Which the, the important part of that to us is this other thing in a box, this white box, that if we want to undo e to the x we can take the natural log of it and then we get x. Okay, so um, that's the first little piece. The other thing that's really fantastically amazing, really, really incredible, is uh, when we look at the derivative of e to the x. Okay, so I just want you to, I, I really wish I could make you uh, just understand how amazing this is. So I'm, I'm going to do my best here. Um, you know, let's take the derivative of some functions, like the derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, well, the, you know, x squared is this uh, par parabola thing, and, uh, you know, if I were to graph it, and then, then 2x is this line, and, um, you know, if, if I wanted to know the derivative, the, the slope of the line of x squared at 5, I would just put 5 in here, it would be a slope of 10. Okay, so... Uh, you know, this parabola, uh, that was a bad x-axis, much better. So, you know, at, at 5, then we have this slope of 10, up 10 and over 1. Um, and just just grasp that, that at 5, the slope has some value. Um, now let's look at e to the x. Um, so... See, so we'll take, in order to prove that what the derivative is, we'll just look at the, um, the natural log of e, of e to the x, okay? And we know now that natural log of e to the x equals x, <coughs> all right? So to see what the derivative of e to the x is, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides, knowing that I'm going to have to use a chain rule, and at, at, you know, part of it is going to be the derivative of e to the x. So I'll use the chain rule to, to take the derivative of the natural log of e to the x. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative of this side, and we'll take the derivative of this side. So the, the, on the right side, the derivative of x is 1. 
the derivative of the natural log of e to the x is, okay, so the derivative of the outside, the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that. Okay, then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll just say the derivative, whatever it is. The derivative of e to the x. <coughs> Um, but what we do have is an equation involving the derivative of e to the x and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And what we have is 1 over e to the x times the derivative of e to the x equals 1. Well, if this is true, if I can take the derivative and divide it by e to the x and get 1, uh, I could multiply by e to the x on both sides. We can look at it that way. And we'll find out that the derivative, okay, hold on to your seats here, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's its own derivative. That has never happened before. We've never seen that. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. They, they all have these different uh, functions that are the derivative. But the derivative, the slope of the function e to the x, is the value of e to the x. Okay, so if I if I pull out my calculator here and and I graph e to the x see here we are right here e to the x power it is its own derivative so not only if I go to the table uh, let's go let's go to the graph so it's this exponential function if I uh, trace along this graph, I put in 2 uh, e to the second power is 7.389. 7.389, so remember that. Um, but also, my calculator, and yours as well, uh, can find the numerical derivative. <coughs> it's just the value of the slope at any point. So I'll also I'll plug in 2, again, you know, find the derivative at 2. 7.389, exactly the same thing. At the at this point, y is 7.389, and the slope is 7.389. Uh, it's just an incredible thing to me. Okay, so eh, if you if you're not amazed by that, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, but it's pretty cool because when we take the derivative of e to the x. Uh, it's just itself. If we take the derivative again, we get e to the x. Take the derivative again, e to the x. Forever and ever and ever, we just keep getting e to the x. Okay. Uh, so that also means uh, that the the definite integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c. So uh, you just man, that takes taking makes taking derivatives and and integrals really easy. Um, and it, it just expands our uh, set of, of derivatives and integrals that we know. And now we have, along with uh, the integral of x to the n power uh, and uh, the sine of x and the natural log of x, or sorry, not the natural log of x, but dx over x, that's, that is the natural log of x, um, and and so many others, secant squared, secant tangent, cosecant, cosine, uh, we, we now add to the mix the integral of e to the x is, uh, <coughs> is equal to e to the x plus c. And we'll get uh, functions in the form, you know, of, of, with u substitution of e to the u du uh, and, and take integrals that way. Um, so that about sums up those the things that we need to know from the previous section uh, and uh, the essentials of this section. So uh, I will cut over to the sample problems video. Thanks for watching.